This video is to help you complete the spreadsheet exercise. So let's take a look at number one. And I'm on the sheet for that particular item. So each of these tasks or item in the worksheet requires a separate sheet in the spreadsheet. So let me um, expand this browser window, make a point of that. So this sheet is for the basic arithmetic, the next sheet is for the functions, scatter plot, and then the second scatter plot. Go back to the basic arithmetic, and I'll just do a couple of these, and I'll pick one or two from the multiplication and the division. I encourage you to use E notation when carrying out these operations. So, for example, I'll do the last one here for the multiplication. Oops, and that will be no, not that one. This here, and. It's enter plus 1.32e uh, negative 5 times 3.32e negative 12. Oops. Okay, and that answer seems reasonable because when you multiply uh, common bases, or in this case 10, and you have these exponents, you add the exponents. So an exponent of negative 17 is reasonable. And now we'll carry out this last division problem. Here we have 1.32e negative 5 divided by 3.32e negative 12. Now our answer should be pretty large because we're dividing a relatively larger number by a relatively smaller number. And so the exponent should be on the order of positive 7, positive 6. And so here we get a positive 6. So we'll take a look at the next item, which should be on the next sheet. This is the function sheet. So I would need to enter these data in the data column and then carry out these operations on the data. I'm going to highlight the data and get rid of one decimal place, shift it to the left one, so now the data looks as it is in the list. Now I'll use the sum function, the average function, and the standard deviation function, plus sum, just type in SUM, and left parenthesis, I'm going to push the cursor up on that bottom cell, sh press shift, and now just scroll up, highlighting all those cell identifications. So we have B2 through B8. Press return, and it'll sum them automatically. Next, we'll type in the word average. And left parenthesis, same deal, move up to that bottom cell. I'll use the cursor key. Uh, shift hold, scroll up till you cover all the data, press enter and it will compute the average. And finally standard deviation, STDEV, oops, left parenthesis, scroll up, highlight the range of data, press enter and you get the number for the standard deviation. Now let's round these to three sig figs. So let's truncate this, 0.172. Now for natural log, ln is the natural log, and ln left parenthesis, enter the cell identification, B2, and press enter. Now you could go down the list and manually type in ln, left parenthesis, the cell identification, and go through it one by one. Or you could highlight a cell that has that operation completed, scroll over this square, left click and hold and drag, 
and it will automatically copy the formula from the previous cell and increment the identity. And same kind of thing can be done for log base 10. Now if you just type in LOG, the spreadsheet will understand that you're talking about log base 10. If you want to take the log base of some other number, then you need to enter that base accordingly. But if you just type in LOG, it understands it as base 10. Scroll over to the cell, which is B2. Press Enter. Computes the log of that number. Then click on the square, click and hold, drag, and it'll copy the formula and increment the cells and you're done. So the third item on the spreadsheet is about plotting data and then determining the slope of the line that the data represent. So scatter plot and I'm going to enter the data. I entered the concentration data in using E format. So if you take a look at what I have here, 4.77E, negative 4. If you use something like this, 4 times 10 raised to the exponent, negative 4, that by itself is going to be interpreted as just alphanumeric text. If you want to use this format, you need to enter a plus sign or an equal sign before the 4 times 10 to the minus 4th. Because what you're doing here is telling the spreadsheet to, to carry out a, a multiplication operation. If you enter it using E notation, it, you do not need to precede this notation with a plus or an equal sign. It understands that you're entering, entering an exponential with the base 10. See, and there's the number. Down here, it just sees it as alphanumeric text, so you need to do that, and now it takes it as the actual number. Um, so I encourage you to use E notation rather than doing times 10 raised to the exponent because it's more typing and you'll probably run into more trouble that way. So now that we have the data entered, I'm going to need to plot it. Highlight the labels and all of the data. And there's a couple ways you could insert a graph. I'm going to expand this window so we could see the menus. One way is to use the tool here, insert chart. The other way is to go to the insert menu and you can insert chart here. Either way you do it, you'll come up with this window. At this point, go to chart type and we want to select a scatter plot. Scroll down, you see a scatter plot. Click on that type of scatter plot, and it by default it chooses these items. That's fine, and just click insert, and there you have the scatter plot. In the PDF document, I asked you to omit the legend, so click on the legend and just click on none. I also asked to provide a title. So there's the scatter plot. The thing I asked you to do was to determine the slope of the data. If you recall from algebra, it was the change in y divided by the change in x. That's the slope. And the way you need to enter the data into the slope function is y data first, then x data. So keeping that in mind, now we're going to use the slope function. So type in slope, left parenthesis, highlight only the data, in this case the y data, press comma, and then highlight the x data, and then press return. 
So the slope is negative 0.0000412. Does that seem reasonable? Well, it's a negative slope, which is consistent with the way the line is trending. And remember, the slope is the change in y over the change in x. It would suggest that there's very little tilt in the line. It, there should be very little change or tilt in this line because this number is point zero or negative point zero 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 four one two. Now it seems like it's tilting quite a bit, but the change we're getting here in the y is very small compared to the change we're getting in the x. If you look at this carefully, and that's consistent with the value of the slope. So this slope value is reasonable. We'll move on to the second scatter plot. Here we need to enter data, but then also take the natural log of the concentration data. So now I entered the data that I provided in the PDF, the time and the concentration. But now we need to determine the natural log of the concentration data, because that is what we're going to plot. So we proceed as we did earlier, ln cell identity, enter, and then I click, hold, drag, and here are the natural log values of the concentration. Now I'm going to click and hold. Now I'm going to insert the chart and we'll go to the chart types, click on scatter, insert, OK. Be sure you click update to get that into the chart that is on the spreadsheet. So we have it. Now let's take a look at the line. It looks pretty linear. That's good. So we can in fact use slope or the linear regression function. So we'll type S-L-O-P-E and again Y data first. So natural log data comma x data, enter, we get a negative 0 0.0923, etc, etc. And does that seem reasonable? The line is trending in a negative fashion, that's good. There appears to be very little change in the y numbers relative to the change in the x numbers, so that number seems, the slope value seems reasonable. Uh, let's truncate this to three sig figs.